welcome to the video. Today it's all about Pam Anderson and this is going to be fun so don't go anywhere. She is amazing. Do you know that we actually have things in common, she and I? We're both Canadian, we're both born in the 1960s and we are both naturally brunette, not blonde at all. Today we are going to look at all things, we're going to make some food, we're going to drink some wine, we're going to look at her life and her times, the good times and the bad times. We're going to focus on the good times because that's what she would want to do. One of the things that she loves to do, and we're going to talk about exercise, is the beach walk. And who loves the beach walk more than me? Well, obviously just Pam Anderson. So don't go anywhere. It's going to be fun. Good morning and welcome Hi. to a brand new day. So it's about 10 a.m. because guess what? Pamela Anderson is another one that goes for the intermittent fasting. Only eats from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. That means it's an early dinner. So we're gonna get ready for breakfast, but first, coffee. She always goes for decaf coffee, cappuccino actually, or sometimes uh, an espresso, and mixed with non-dairy milk of some variety. Since we're at the beginning of the day, I thought, why don't we start at the beginning? But we are not gonna dwell on her past. We're gonna move on from that very, very quickly. She's talked at length about the abuse that she suffered as a young girl. She's talked about her father's alcoholism. And of course, we've just heard ad nauseum about the famous sex tapes. So we are just gonna put that where it belongs in the past. Our past does not define us. And we can just leave that there. And she has definitely moved on and we're gonna move on too because it's time to eat. So what are we gonna have for breakfast? Well, Pam says she devours avocado. She absolutely adores baguette and tomatoes and balsamic. So do you hear avocado toast calling your name? Because I do. Okay, so I've got some nice toasted baguette here and I'm gonna put some fresh tomatoes on and I've got some fresh avocado. You know what, everybody in this brother knows now that Pamela was discovered on the Jumbotron at a BC Lions game and that she quickly got signed by the Labatt. She was wearing a Labatt's blue uh, beer shirt and was quickly signed. And within that same year, she got onto her very first cover on Playboy. She graces more covers than anyone else, 14 right now and counting. As well, by that time then, she got into her first TV show, which was Home Improvements. So she went on from Home Improvement and she landed the role in Baywatch in 1992, where she got the role of CJ Parker. And she was then the longest running cast member on Baywatch. It was during that time on Baywatch that she decided that she would give up meat and became, I think the first vegetarian and then went on to become vegan. And she became really outspoken and really became an activist with PETA and has graced many, many ads for PETA. The famous one where she's just wearing leaves, another very famous one where she looks like a side of beef, but a really good looking side of beef. And then as well, during, you know, throughout this time, she got married a lot. She got, she got married five times uh, and says that she just loves falling in love and she hasn't given up on it yet. Definitely, without question, her crowning achievement are her two sons, Brandon and Dylan, who she she's always, from everything that I've seen, she has always been put mother first. Also, I, she loves, 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 loves grapefruits. All kinds of fruits, really. So I've got this together and her favorite vinegar. She's very into different spices and vinegar to go with all of her vegan dishes. We've got some nice balsamic vinegar and this is gonna be great. Pamela admits now that over the lockdown of COVID that she became what she calls puffy and has now got back onto her routine and is counting her carbs and counting her macros. So after I've got this down to actually hit my stomach, we're gonna go downstairs and talk about her workout. It may not surprise you to know that Pamela really doesn't love the traditional gym scene. Her very, very favorite thing to do is walking, loves beach walking, and I love beach walking too. If she's gonna be on the elliptical or on the treadmill, she's gotta be reading while she's doing it. Otherwise, way too boring. Apart from the treadmill and walking, she also loves Pilates. So we're gonna get on the reformer, do a little Pilates workout, 
as well something that she's doing is the band workout. As much as she's saying that she doesn't enjoy really working out, it's clear that over the years you do not keep a body like hers with those toned legs and the toned midsection without working pretty hard at it. So she's often been quoted as saying that she's much more flexible than she is strong. And I can see that because she seems to do a lot of stretching and you can see even when she's brushing her teeth, she's stretching. This is definitely something that is gonna keep her toned. When she was filming way back for Barb Wire, she was doing a lot of Tybo. I have read that she was also doing some fun cardio strip routines just to do something cardio that's a little bit different. She's also been known to love running and has in fact run the New York City Marathon prior and also did a very long run in aid of Haiti. We're gonna talk a little bit about when Pamela went on Broadway just last year playing Roxy Hart in Chicago. But what she loved to do for fitness there was walk, walk, walk in the park and she felt that that walking and that stamina really served her well. She also really feels strongly about self-care. Seems like she's having massages all the time. I would love to have massages like that. Good for her. Who's ready for lunch? For sure Pamela is, and that means that for sure I am. Today we are gonna make her quinoa pasta, vegan of course, lunch. And I've got a lot of things that she loves again, I've got beets that I roasted, I've got fresh tomatoes, I've got this quinoa pasta, I roasted some garlic, and I've got some really expensive pine nuts. And the other thing that she loves, and I'm gonna use that again today, is sun-dried tomatoes. So we're gonna go with that too. You know, one of the things that uh, Pamela talks about with her veganism is that she believes that it is really what's kept her young. One book that she strongly recommends is The Pillars of Health by John Pierre. She highly recommends that to anybody considering getting into veganism. You know, one of the things that's interesting is that she she admits that she can also be an emotional eater. And if you watch her re recent documentary, you'll see that she gets a little bit of bad news and she runs for a croissant. You know, that's something that's, you know, same as maybe all of us, I don't know. So I've got the pasta, I've got the nice tomatoes, Beautiful greenery. I've got the sun-dried tomatoes as well. I'm gonna put in some fresh basil. I've just put a tablespoon of olive oil in there and some balsamic vinegar and some salt and pepper. That's what we're gonna use for the dressing. And I'm gonna squeeze in my garlic. Roasted garlic. Now I've roasted this garlic. No olive oil or anything. Just wrapped it up in foil. Left it in for at 400 for an hour. And it is very mild, so you don't have to worry that roasted garlic is going to be strong. And again, the beets I did roast at uh, 400. Beautiful and colorful. And I'm gonna just give that a nice mix. Alrighty, I think I'll just top that with a little bit of the vegan cheese. And lunch is served. I kind of love the pink. I was thinking at first maybe I shouldn't have mixed all the, be the beets in, but I sort of love the pink color. It looks beautiful. I'm gonna have this and we're gonna do something after lunch that is one of Pamela's favorite things to do. And you're gonna be really, really surprised. So I'm gonna see you in a little bit. So I bet that you didn't think that this is what we were gonna be doing. Pamela has come a long way from Baywatch, but some things she just can't stop. She loves to do laundry and she specifically loves to iron. She finds it soothing, she finds it meditative, she finds it relaxing. What she also likes with her ironing is a glass or two of rosé. Nothing wrong with that. We talked about the early bit a little bit, but now what is she doing now? What's been going on in the middle time? Well, she's been doing Garden of Eden. She's also was recently on Broadway starring as Roxy Hart in Chicago. And you know, she's the first to admit that she's not the greatest dancer and maybe not the greatest singer, but she's got heart and she's got guts. Oh, a couple yeah. other interesting kind of fun facts is Pamela has five dogs, total animal lover, as well as you know how she is all into veganism. She does not just talk the talk, she walks the walk too. Very environmentally conscious. She has solar panels all installed. She's water catching. She's doing sustainability, recycling. She's very much 
in that eco-friendly mindset. Well, who's getting hungry? Because I am, and we're now going to make a Moroccan stew that Pamela made on one of her Garden of Eden shows, and we're gonna use the Instapot today. She says she loves the gadgets, she uses the Instapot, uses uh, a Cuisinart, uses a Vitamix. So I just wanna tell you that the Moroccan stew is not hard and fast. Since that time, and I watched them make it, I scoured the internet for all kinds of different recipes and there are no two recipes the same. So don't get hung up if you don't have all the ingredients. I'm gonna use squash today. If you don't have squash, use a sweet potato. I'm gonna use the carrots and I'm gonna use the tomatoes and some celery. She loves celery. I've used dry chickpeas, which I soaked overnight. But if you don't have dry chickpeas, use two tins of canned chickpeas. That's fine. So don't get hung up on it. I also have a lot of spices and you don't need to use them all. I'm of course gonna put the recipe in the description for you. I would say, don't go without the cumin, don't go without the cinnamon. Let's put in a tablespoon or so of olive oil into our Instapot. If you don't have an Instapot, just do this on the stove. It's no problem, absolutely fine. There's a lot of different ways of doing this stew. I'm gonna do with partial immersion blending. So I'm gonna have a smooth base, but I'm gonna save back some of my chickpeas and my some of my tomatoes to put back in the end so that there's a bit of chunk. So I've got uh, five cloves of garlic in here and two medium-sized onions. Oh, and I have a small butternut squash. Just to let you know, you don't need to peel it. I've got also three stalks of celery that I'm going to be putting in. As for my herbs, I've just got them all in here. I've got two teaspoons of cumin. I've got two teaspoons of cinnamon. I've got two teaspoons of paprika. I've got a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne, and a teaspoon of turmeric, and a teaspoon of ground coriander. I'm going to hold back about a cup of chickpeas that I'm going to put in at the end. We've got our chickpeas, give that a stir. I'm gonna add my spices. I'm gonna add about a teaspoonful of salt. We might need a little bit more because I always use the salt-free broth. So I'm gonna add my spices. I'm gonna add my broth. I've used the immersion blender and now I'm gonna add those things that I wanna have still some chunks in there to make it more stewy. So I'm gonna add my tomatoes. I've got my reserved chickpeas. This just gives it some nice texture. I've also chopped some cilantro. If you hate cilantro, don't put it in. Here's a great hack that Pamela has. While she's cooking, she chomps on sugarless gum. Stops her from picking too much during the preparation process. Save it for her meal. We're ready and it looks fab. So now you see I've still got some nice big chunks in here. We're gonna add some spinach and a nice dollop of vegan Greek yogurt. And that is dinner. You have got to try this. This is so good. So what's next for Pam Anderson? Well, she just got renewed second season for Pam's Garden of Eden. She's now just signed up with HGTV for a new vegan cooking show. She's just released her memoir. And there's gonna be a lot more Pamela Anderson. You know, I think that she's been, was very exploited over the years by so many people. But you know, she's no dummy either. Even when she let them roast her on the Comedy Central, she put herself out there and was just lambasted, but she made them give her a $250,000 check payable to PETA. So good on her. When I first started researching Pam Anderson, the last two descriptors that I ever thought that I would come up with would be smart and natural. And now, several weeks after I've looked into her and looked into her, the two things that I come up with are smart and so natural, she's just her. She's unapologetically her. She has not forgotten her past. Look at her selection of gown that she wore to the premiere of her newly released documentary. That was a definite nod to Baywatch. Pamela Anderson is a survivor and I'm going to be really interested to see what she's got up her sleeve next because I know there's a lot more to come. So cheers to Pam Anderson. I hope you really enjoyed this video because I had so much fun making it. And if you're not part of like this wonderful subscriber group that I have, please join now, subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one.